Uh, this chassis, which is a uh, flip-flop store, two-bit store, uh, was not functioning very well because we needed to add a capacitor to one of the signal inputs, and we'd missed it last week. I had missed it. So we've reached an interesting point in the EDSAC project where several teams have got their parts of the machine working and we're beginning to join those pieces together. And as we do so, we're finding that maybe signals aren't at the right level or the timing of the signals isn't fully accurate enough. And this is what is known as commissioning. In the days when the EDSAC machine was being built, this would have been very difficult because they weren't sure if it would work at all. We have the advantage that we know EDSAC will work and of course we can use modern test gear and use modern computers to help us test out the components. And so we have rather more confidence but even so we're finding many interesting challenging issues. We gathered this morning to spend a couple of hours round the table talking about progress to date, <laughs> lessons learnt and the implications of some of those lessons on how we might make some small changes to the remaining circuits that we have to connect together. So as you might imagine, our conversations are very deeply technical. One thing I learned to start with is, talking to Nigel, the internals of the adder are standard gates and they need driving with um, EF54 cathode followers to, so that the right voltage levels. The, unfortunately, the clock signals use EF55s, which have a higher sort of base load. And as a general policy, I wouldn't uh, advise against gating signals from an EF55 with an EF54 because of the different standard voltage levels. You've got four different conditions. No, no, I mean, on an, in an EF55, yeah. you get the same swing as you would get in an EF54. Yeah, but that's from a different but base. Offset. Yeah, it's yeah. offset. So if you get them together, you get four different levels. Mm -hmm. But I don't think it makes so much difference on an AND gate. It certainly makes a difference on an yeah. OR gate. Because the OR gate has to start with, yeah. Oh, with the clock goes yeah, into the Yeah, with the carry coming back and that. It was ORing with the signal coming in. They're addressing <laughs> issues, I mean, for example, is one person sending a signal strong enough for the other person to receive it? If not, is it the job of the sender to send a stronger signal? Or is it the job of the recipient to clean up what they receive? If we know that signal goes to other places, what are going to be the implications of having more load on it? And indeed, we're finding um, little revisions to some of the designs of the standard circuits we're using as we understand the nature of, of their behaviour much more. So the engineers are making small changes to individual chassis as they make them work together. As of today, we've been able to demonstrate that we can take instructions from a set of test switches, feed those through into the older decoding system that involves converting them from a serial form to a parallel form. And once that's complete, we'll be able to give them to the arithmetic units that hopefully will do real work for us. We know the stall system is working. We have a demonstration of the counting system that tracks which word of the computer's memory is, is where in the delay line system. Yes, basically up to now we've had the independent units that have been tested with independent pulses. This is the first time we've had the various units talking to each other and sharing information and passing it there and back again and there and back again. Which is quite an important step forward because everything's got to be yeah. right. Otherwise the information gets lost, literally. This is a solution to a problem that's yeah. gone on for a while and it's now working really well. In the right here, there's a storage unit here and an arithmetic unit there. And the storage unit holds 18 bits in series and circulates the whole 18 bits around in a loop. And the other adds in an extra one every time around the loop. And also uh, adds in the carry from the previous clock. And the net result is, as the information circles round and round, it counts in a binary fashion up to the maximum of 2 to the 18. That number then is used to drive the whole of the rest of the addressing system. It represents the position of information in time right across the whole system. So it's absolutely fundamental that this unit's got to count accurately and consistently. And that's all it's doing, it's counting. Right, on the scope, across the trace, the least needing bits come on the left hand side. And they're happening, they're changing so fast. They, they look like they're there all the time, but in fact they're there 50% of the time. Step up the binary number, they change slower and slower until they're changing so slowly you can actually see them changing on a human scale. 
it changes once every time the machine goes around one cycle, which is once every 36 microseconds. Eventually, it counts right up to the 2 to the power 18. The conventional form, yeah, that's what they did the originally. Mm. Yeah. Um, right to left. They yeah. may have changed it to be left to right, I don't know. Well, I've always been left to right. <laughs> well, most, well, least, I'm a left to right man, that's all. Left to right. <laughs> least significant bit on the left. Yeah. And although it's not here at the museum, in Cambridge, Nigel Benet can demonstrate the arithmetic unit doing quite a large number of the arithmetic functions. Really the main piece that's missing now at this stage of the project is the input output system which is still under design by one of our colleagues Martin Evans. And when we've got the machine working I can envisage there'll be a further phase of rationalisation where we tidy up things that we've added or taken out um, to arrive at the, the final working machine engineered to a high standard. At this stage it has lots of wires hanging out of it and all kinds of strange things going on to make it work. That's inevitable during commissioning. At the end we want to end up with a, a clean, tidy machine of the kind that the Cambridge pioneers would have used when they handed it over to the users in 1949.